Oh shit, here we go again. So, yesterday, Gaddafi trended. Why? Because in the long tradition of it's okay when we do it, a bunch of knob-slobbing Democrats want Obama to be a pure example of the anti-Trump. So badly, they'll ignore what he, you know, uh, did. That's why when White House spokesman Hogan Gidley mentioned that Obama extrajudicially killed Anwar and Abdul Rahman al awlaki Osama, Tim Osman bin Laden, and Muammar Gaddafi, they all came out of the woodwork to be orbiters for Queen Barack. I mean, I didn't even know who started all this until hours later because the original post got buried. So many people thirsty for a hope and change wellspring that never provided any hydration, so little time. So, what did he say that was so abjectly terrible. Soleimani was in fact planning imminent attacks. While Democrats and the media quibble over its definition, quick point. When Obama killed bin Laden, al-Awlaki, and Gaddafi without congressional approval, there were no imminent attacks and Democrats did not ask or care. His comment specifically about the killing of bin Laden, al-Awlaki, and Gaddafi is objectively true. Literally no lies detected, but oh boy, there were hundreds of blue checks and thousands of salivating morons who screamed for hours about how wrong he was. So five hours later, I saw the thing trending and threw my hat in the ring. By saying, oh good, Gaddafi is trending, and a bunch of people are trying to absolve Obama. Look, illiterates. Research the CIA finding that Obama signed to aid the rebels who killed Gaddafi. Look up Hillary's We Came, We Saw, He Died. And at least graduate junior high. Fuck's sake. Nobody's even challenged me on this. Presumably because the site of Twitter who'd cry about this already has me blocked preemptively. Can't have too many facts in your diet if you want to be dummy thick. And since they're also too ideologically vapid to trend the others, I'll be focusing on Gaddafi. But I'll get to the others soon enough, too. Now, like... I hate Trump. I've made my reasons crystal clear, and anyone who thinks this point of accuracy by one of his staffers will change that is not a very full box of crayons. But Hogan is actually wrong zero times in that part of the tweet. Zero. Everything he said was fucking true. He would later go on to say, Hey, fact checkers. Don't be ridiculous. What I was clearly saying is that Obama and Hillary took credit for the killing of these terrorists repeatedly, including Gaddafi. Hillary even said we came, we saw he died. Emails, the ones Hillary didn't delete, showed her advisors urged her to own it. Obama's authorization of a bombing campaign and his administration's assistance in the overthrow of Libyan government led to Gaddafi's death. Everyone knows this. We all saw how he died. The real point here is that many Democrats never said a word about war powers when Obama was president, even when he carried out hundreds of drone attacks, including on American citizens. Bottom line, for Democrats, this is not about the power of the presidency. This is about who the president is. Democrats rush to criticize this president even when he takes out the world's most dangerous terrorists simply because the president is Trump. Now. I think the world's most dangerous terrorist is a bit stupid, especially since the U.S. is constantly pushing people around and, as Dennis Leary put it, we got the bombs, two words, nuclear fucking weapons, okay? And many Democrats opposed Obama's warmongering, but not most, by a damn sight. The U.S. got away with killing Gaddafi, the al Awlakis, and their CIA asset- oh shit, sorry, did I say that shit out loud? I meant Bin Laden? Shit, I hate it when that happens. Point is, they get away with pushing around the world, being in unpayable debt to the rest of the world, being in a ton of countries, killing a ton of civilians, helping install their economic and political system wherever they traipse, and more. And why? why? Uh, because they're all scared fucking shitless of the good old US of A. What's a word for, like, manipulation of politics by way of violence and fear? Shit! Can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, maybe it'll come to me later. Anyway, while I struggle to remember that, let's look at the facts. Obama signed a CIA finding requesting funds for a secret op 
to arm and fund the rebels who would eventually kill Gaddafi. Reuters reported that President Barack Obama has signed a secret order authorizing covert U.S. government support for rebel forces seeking to oust Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, government officials told Reuters on Wednesday. This was written a while ago. Obama signed the order known as a presidential finding within the last two or three weeks, according to government sources familiar with the matter. Such findings are a principal form of presidential directive used to authorize secret operations by the Central Intelligence Agency. This is a necessary legal step before such action can take place, but does not mean that it will. And literally everyone agreed to these facts too. Even liberal rags like New York Times couldn't have a story softening the blow of the Benghazi embassy attack if they didn't also talk about the time Obama helped play regime change in the region. They said, quote, The Obama administration secretly gave its blessings to arms shipments to Libyan rebels from Qatar last year. But American officials later grew alarmed as evidence grew that Qatar was turning some of the weapons over to Islamic militants, according to the United States officials and foreign diplomats. And the article goes on to say that there weren't many CIA officers in the region and it led to the diffusion of these arms to many less moderate rebels. Wow, the CIA accidentally arming terrorists has never happened before. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. The BBC reported that this was one of Obama's worst mistakes, elaborating that after the former Libyan leader was killed, Libya plunged into chaos with militias taking over and two rival parliaments and governments forming. Obama called Libya a mess. Uh, whoops. So while remembering this, in total 2020 hindsight, let's also hear from The Guardian, who talked about how the Libyan government tried desperately to push for peace. While Gaddafi stood his ground on creating a new Pan-African currency, he was trying to get the U.S. in peace talks for months. Quote, the Gaddafi regime carried out an extraordinary clandestine lobbying, op lobbying operation to try and stop NATO's bombardment of Libya and believed the Western allies were likely to launch a full-scale invasion in either late September or October. Secret documents in Tripoli seen by The Guardian reveal the desperate attempts by the Libyan government in its final months to influence U.S. and world opinion. It approached key international opinion formers from the U.S. President Barack Obama downwards. The regime tried to persuade the Democratic Congressman Denis Kucinich, a well-known rebel who voted against NATO military action in Libya, and opposed the Iraq war to visit Tripoli as part of a hastily arranged peace mission. The Libyan government offered to pay all of Kucinich's costs related to the trip, including travel expenses and accommodation. End quote. So, why did the U.S. want to invade? They claim it was to protect civilians, but how the fuck did they do that? By all accounts, their actions led to the destruction of Libya, and the whole region surrounding them is still beholden to the dollar and a foreign policy of death and destruction, but not by choice. When you have these friends, who needs enemies? <laughs> From Foreign Policy Magazine, In truth, the Libyan intervention was about regime change from the very start, the threat posed by the Libyan regime's military and paramilitary forces to civilian populated areas was diminished by NATO airstrikes and rebel ground movements within the first 10 days. Afterward, NATO began providing direct close air support for advancing rebel forces by attacking government troops that were actually in retreat and had abandoned their vehicles. Fittingly, on October 20th, 2011, it was a U.S. Predator drone and French fighter aircraft that attacked a convoy of regime loyalists trying to flee Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte. The dictator was injured in the attack, captured alive, and then extrajudicially murdered by rebel forces. So, the U.S. came in, didn't like the dictator they saw, had him killed by uh, rebel forces that they armed and funded with CIA money Obama authorized, and all in a bid to destroy stability generated while not under U.S. control. From Common Dreams, Barack Obama destroyed Libya. What he did to Libya is as bad as what Bush did to Iraq and Afghanistan. He doesn't deserve a historical past. When Obama took office in 2009, Libya was under the control of longtime dictator Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, but things were looking up. But we're not allowed to say Obama killed Gaddafi? Okay, retards, let's go down this road then. If Obama isn't responsible for CIA actions he explicitly authorized, then Bush never invaded the Middle East. His dad didn't oversee the highway of death. 
Another time the U.S. marked fleeing people and civilians. You don't get to call the Bushes war criminals anymore. Trump didn't drone enough people to prompt him to cancel the transparent reporting order. He's also not responsible for the smoking age increase or anything else, really. He only signed an approval, after all, and that clearly means he's absolved of all responsibility. Trump did nothing wrong, according to you. Of course, this is absurd, and any dumb fuck stupid enough to believe it would only use it when it exonerates liberal bays like Obama, because if not, you have to say things like, well, if Hitler wasn't pulling the trigger or dropping tablets himself, and that's not all, because essentially this attitude absolves all historical military leaders of everything. All of history must be uprooted because of some stupid adult children who don't want to admit Obama did something icky. And now people like me have to make videos like this, to chastise you, and to tell you to go the fuck to your room and think about what you've done. And that's not all. You thought I'd forget he allegedly killed bin Laden in an illegal raid on a Pakistani compound? And I don't even mean that to say the killing wasn't illegal. I mean it to say that we have more pictures of the alleged corpse of Epstein than we do of bin Laden. And chucking someone out of a helicopter into the ocean isn't a great way to give people confidence you actually offed him. And neither do the mysterious deaths of SEAL Team 6 members, but like, that's a side issue. It was illegal. Pakistan didn't authorize it, and it could have been considered an act worth going to war for. Sound, uh, familiar? Like, uh, maybe similar to the Trump Soleimani jive y'all been railing against, or is it only bad when Trump does it? Or the extrajudicial assassination of two American citizens authorized by Obama in order to shut them up. Anwar and Abdul Rahman al awlaki were killed not too long later by UAVs armed with AGM-114 Hellfire missiles funded by, you guessed it, the CIA. And what did they do? They said the wrong things to the wrong people. And some of those people ended up killing some innocent people. Well, if it's okay to kill people for inciting violence resulting in civilian deaths, the U.S. has a lot to be held accountable for. And the ACLU tried to hold them accountable, saying like, Dear Obama, you can't just vaporize Americans without judicial process. Literally. That's what they said. Oh, and I'm still not pro-Trump. Trump killed Anwar's daughter in a raid by having her shot in the neck. And before the trumpets come at me saying, but my Trump didn't do that, see the rest of this video. Presidents are responsible for kills they sign off on. Even yours. So why does all this have to come up? Well, maybe, like, people look fondly back on their choices and want you to as well. They see their paths through rose-colored glasses and want you to put them on too. Even if it means revising and outright erasing history. Starry-eyed idealists all, they want any detractors to ignore all facts. Absolutely married to their bullshit tribes, they'll block their eyes and ears so they never have to speak on the evils their side does. Well, I'm not gonna leave you alone. I want you to get mad. Even at your guy. Fuck Obama and his trash, warmongering, fake liberal administration and fuck all of the people trying to cover that up. If that includes you, fuck you too.